in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our gospel this morning is a lesson from the book of John. And in the gospel, we hear this line, but he was speaking of the temple of his body. The religious people that day did not understand what Jesus meant. They didn't understand that Jesus was talking about the temple of his body because Jesus came to disrupt the status quo. The status quo, what I mean by that is the current state, the existing state of things. And that status quo, that existing state is always predictable. Animals were being bought and sold. Coins were being changed. All the usual people had the usual roles and were in the usual places. And when most people read this scripture text, they get so distracted by Jesus's display of anger. And they really don't delve into what's really happening in this story. I don't think this story is just about Jesus getting angry because Jesus got angry, I get angry, you get angry. We all get angry and it's okay to be angry. But there's something deeper going on here. I also don't think this story is about the animals and the money changers being in the temple. Jesus would have known that they were there. Jesus grew up a faithful Jew going to temple. He didn't show up that day and say, wow, there are animals and money changers here. This is wrong. That's not the case. The animals and the money changers had always been there. That's how the system worked. That was the status quo. I think Jesus went to temple for one purpose to disrupt the status quo. There are simply times in our lives when a disruption is necessary. There are times when we need the tables of our life to be overturned. Jesus was about disrupting the status quo, the current state of things. And we each know about maintaining the status quo. Have you ever pushed the autopilot button of your life and life becomes dull or mechanical? You go through the motions, you show up, but you're not really there. That's maintaining the status quo. Or how about this? Have you ever smiled that I'm good and everything is fine sort of smile, but in reality, you feel hollow, you feel empty, and you feel as though you are alone and your heart is breaking. That is the status quo. Or maybe you wake up in the morning and you are still exhausted as you were when you went to bed the night before. That's maintaining the status quo. Have you ever felt like you were just not yourself? Nothing seemed right. Boredom becomes, overcomes creativity. There's no enthusiasm or wonder or curiosity or imagination. It's just the same old, same old day in and day out. We are the busiest, some of us are the busiest as we've ever been. And yet it can feel like we're not getting anywhere. There's no depth or no meaning. That's maintaining the status quo. And maintaining the status quo can happen anywhere, in friendships, in marriages, in parent-child relationships, at work, and yes, even the church. But those things, those friendships, marriages, parent-child relationships, work, and even the church, those things are not the problem. Those tasks are not where the issue lies. They're merely symptoms. 
their symptoms to like the same way that the angel, the animals and the money changers are the symptoms in our gospel for this morning. They are not the problem. The problem is not so much in the temple, but in the human heart. And the question is, what gives rise to wanting to maintain the status quo? Sometimes it's about fear. We're fearful about what is happening in our lives or the uncertainty of the future. And we want some type of security or predictability so that we can cling on to that which is familiar. Maintaining the status quo is predictable and steady, but it only creates an illusion of security. Sometimes maintaining the status quo is a symptom of grief and sorrow. Something has been lost. We can't get back to the life that we want. So we cling to maintaining the status quo because it's familiar and we desperately want stability. Other times we are so busy and worn out making a living that life turns into one task after another, one appointment after another, a never ending to-do list. Maybe we've taken people or relationships or things for granted. Maybe we've lost our sense of gratitude or curiosity or wonder. Now know that I am preaching to myself right now because in a time where so much has changed, I am grasping to that which is familiar and maintaining the status quo brings forth security, even if it's a false sense of security. There are thousands of reasons and thousands of ways that people maintain the status quo. But there's one common denominator throughout all of those many reasons. There's a common denominator of why. And the common denominator is our forgetfulness. We forget. We forget who we are and whose we are. We forget what Jesus says in our gospel for today. We forget that we are the temple of God's presence. We forget that all of creation is the residence of God. We forget that in whatever direction we might turn, there is a face and the face is of God gazing upon us in every direction. We forget. We forget this. And as soon as we forget this truth about ourselves and about each other and about our world, life becomes maintaining the status quo. I believe this is what happened in the temple. They didn't see themselves or one another as the true temple of God. It was all about the human built temple, the animals and the coins. They had forgotten that God delighted within them and that God was more interested in them than in their festivals and that God wanted them more than their offerings to God. When we forget that we are the temple of God, life can become a series of transactions. Relationships are lost, priorities get rearranged, making a living replaces living a life. Life becomes a marketplace rather than a place of meeting the holy the holy within ourselves and in one another. And that is what Jesus is overturning in the temple. In our gospel, according to John, this happens in the very beginning of Jesus's earthly ministry. 
In the first verses of John, we learn that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. In the second chapter of John, we see water being turned to wine. And in this passage in the Gospel of John, we see that now the temple is becoming human. And it doesn't stop there. Throughout the Gospels, throughout the book of John, we are encountering Jesus interrupting the status quo. Regardless of who you are, what you have done or left undone, or how we see or judge our lives, we are the temple of God. And there is one who stands in the midst of the temple, interrupting the status quo. What does the temple of your life need today? What tables in your life need to be overturned? What animals need to be driven out? And I'm not asking about what will make you holy, or what needs to happen so that you become holy or become the temple, but so that you can see what you already are and claim what is already yours. Jesus does not make us into something we are not. Jesus calls us back who we already are and who we've always been. He was speaking of the temple of our body. Amen.